Hey everyone, I'm Total Instinct and I'm back with my top 5 mid-level money makers. Yes! For this video I'm going to assume most of you have stats between 60 and 80, so everything I'm going to show you is going to be within that level range. And for each method, I'm going to go over the requirements, the GP per hour, give a brief overview of how the method works, then I'll go over some similar alternatives, and then I'll summarize everything at the end. Also, make sure to check out GE Tracker if you're watching this video way in the future, as the profits with certain methods may be different. On top of this, make sure to use the timestamps below, as I might go over some information quickly. And finally, make sure to stay till the end to hear about a Bandos Godsword giveaway. Anyways, let's get into method number five. All right, let's do this. In our fifth spot, we have killing lava dragons in the wilderness. So just to go over the basics, the recommended stats are 75 or higher range if you decide to use range, or 70 or higher magic if you decide to use magic, which is the more common route and what I'll actually be covering in this video. On top of this, you'll want at least 70 defense and 43 prayer to make it easy to get away from PKers. On average, you earn about 15k per kill with the current GE prices, and you can get anywhere between 35 to 45 kills an hour depending on your combat stats, gear setup, and how many PKers you run into. And with the setup I'm going to show you in this video, you won't really spend more than 20k an hour, giving us a total profit between 500 and 650k per hour. And to keep this video from dragging, I'm just going to go over one low risk mage setup that I think works great at Lava Dragons, although if you want to make upgrades, I would recommend checking out osrsbestinslot.com. The site helps tons when figuring out what gear to equip because it ranks each piece of gear from worst to best and even allows you to compare different gear setups, allowing you to figure out what works best for you in the wilderness. Anyways, getting back to my setup, I would recommend a Wizard's Hat, Complete Mystic Gear, a Glory, and a Black Salamander with Harlander Tar as our magic weapon. A God Cape and Rune Gloves, or whichever you have, is recommended as well, but not entirely necessary. As for the inventory, I'd recommend an axe, which I'll explain why you'll need in a second. You'll also want a pestle and motor so you can grind up lava scales to save inventory space, a sip of a super extended anti-fire potion because we have no anti-fire shield, some food of your choice, and a looting bag which can be easily obtained as a drop from thugs in the Edgeville dungeon over here. And with this setup, we're only risking about 17k, and that's without our Protect from Item Prayer on, so you really don't have to worry about losing much. When it comes to getting to Lava Dragons, you can use a variety of paths, however what I find easiest is using the Canoe at Edgeville, which is actually why you need the axe. Now there is a requirement of 57 woodcutting to use the Canoe, so just use another method if you don't have the requirement. Now once we get there you want to just run around to the front entrance or use the agility shortcut if you have 74 agility and the hard wilderness diaries completed. Whatever method you go with just make sure to drink an anti-fire potion before going in then just run over to the highlighted tiles I have over here. These tiles are going to be used to safe spot the dragons. In case a PKer logs in, the best strategy is to just throw up a protection prayer and just run away or use the agility shortcut if you have it available. Make sure to eat food while you run and try to just log out as quick as possible. People who PK here aren't really that great to begin with, so even if you have no experience running from PKers, you shouldn't really worry about dying here too much, especially if we're only risking 20k. An alternative to lava dragons can be green dragons, which are scattered all around the wilderness. These can be killed efficiently with lower combat levels and are in locations that aren't in as deep wilderness as lava dragons. If you want to stay out of the wilderness, I'd recommend going to kill blue dragons located in the Taverly dungeon just west of Falador. And so to quickly summarize, Lava Dragons can earn you somewhere between 500 to 650k profit per hour depending on the gear you bring, your levels, and how many PKers you run into. Alternatives to Lava Dragons would be green or blue dragons, and in general I think Lava Dragons are good for accounts that are rebuilding as they have potential to make you good money without a huge investment, plus they give you a little taste of the wilderness. Mmm, so good and tasty? Moving on to the fourth method, we are going to be tanning hides with the lunar spell Tan Leather. The requirement to cast Tan Leather is 78 magic, the completion of the Lunar Diplomacy quest, plus the Hard Fermanic Diaries which have a variety of skill requirements. Each time you cast the spell, you spend 250 GP plus the cost of the hide you are tanning. In most cases, Black Dragon Hide tends to be the most profitable to use, however I'd recommend checking the margins on each hide just to be safe. 
Anyways, at this time you can earn about 70 GPE per Black Dragon High Tanned and can cast the spell up to 1,600 times in an hour, which would tan a total of 8,000 highs, giving you a total profit of 560k in the hour. To cast the spell, all you need is a Fire Staff, 2 Astral Runes per spellcast, and 1 Nature Rune per spellcast. Also, make sure you're on the Lunar Spellbook. The quickest way to change to it is just to go to someone's house in World 330 and pray at this altar thing. Finally, just buy the hides you want to tan and chill at a bank until you run out of casts. You'll earn somewhere between 100 to 125k magic XP per hour, depending on how many casts you get off in the hour. The only alternative I like using to tan leather is Super Glass make this spell also is on the lunar spell book however it does not require the hard fremenic diaries to use and only needs 77 magic instead of 78 super glass make also trains your crafting level so it can be a good alternative to the tan leather spell for only a small gp cut so to summarize, Tan Leather can make you up to 560k GP per hour at this time. This is a good method for anyone looking to train magic while making some money on the side, and the main alternative to Tan Leather would be Super Glass Make. Nice. So our third method is going to be smithing adamant bars at the Blast Furnace. The requirements to do this is 70 smithing and the completion of the Dwarf Cannon quest. You'll also need a coal bag which can be bought from the Prospector's Percy's Nugget Shop in the Motherlode Mine for 100 gold nuggets. It's also highly recommended to get Ice Gloves which are dropped by the Ice Queen found in the Ice Queen layer on the White Wolf Mountain right here. Also note that to access her you will need to mine rocks which require 50 mining. When looking at the GP per hour, it's possible to smell up to 2,700 adamant ore in an hour, which would use 8,100 coal and about 9 stamina potions and 72k in the blast furnace fees, coming out to a total cost of about 4.3 mil in the hour. On the flip side, you can make 2,700 adamant bars, which sell for 5.1 mil, giving us a profit of about 800k. When making adamant bars, your inventory and bank setup should look something like this with everything easily accessible to you. Staminas are optional, however I highly recommend them because they'll ultimately increase your GP per hour and XP per hour. When actually smelting the bars, you're gonna wanna start by sipping your stamina potion, then fill your coal bag and inventory with coal and to put on the conveyor belt. Once I make it back to the bank, I refill my coal bag with coal and my inventory with adamant ore. Then I place the adamant ore on the conveyor belt and empty my coal bag onto the conveyor belt. At this point your bars are ready to take, however I'd recommend running past them for now and refilling your bag of coal and your inventory with coal to put them back on the conveyor belt. Now you can grab your ore on the way back and deposit it, then refill your coal bag with coal and your inventory with adamant ore and just repeat the last couple of steps. Smelting your bars this way will give you the highest possible yield per hour, which as we mentioned earlier is about 2,700 bars an hour, giving you a total of 101k smithing XP an hour. For alternatives to making adamant bars, I'm just going to suggest to make the other bars at the blast furnace, as every bar I have on the screen is profitable and provides pretty good XP to level up. So to summarize, smelting adamant bars at the blast furnace can make you up to 800k GP per hour. This is a good method for making a lot of GP without putting a ton of effort in. And the main alternatives here are steel, mithril, and runite bars. Not bad, not bad. Now you. At second place, we have Zalra, and I know, some people might consider Zalra to be high level, but to be honest with you, you start getting consistent and semi-efficient kills with just 80 range, 75 magic, 45 prayer, and 70 HP. Also note that you'll need to have completed the Regicide questline to access Zalra, which has other skill requirements, but nothing too tough. Anyways, with these stats, you can average 8 to 14 kills an hour, depending on how comfortable you become with the boss and the gear you bring. On average, you can earn about 145k per kill at Zora, so you'll get a net gain between 1.1 to 2 mil. Supply costs can vary depending on how good you are at the boss and the gear you bring, but in general, most people spend somewhere in between 300 to 600k an hour at Zora, giving us an average of about 650k to 1.5 mil profit an hour at a mid-level if we assume we spend about 450k on supplies. 
Now I know Zalra might be intimidating for some players, but trust me, once you get the rotations down, it really becomes muscle memory and isn't bad at all. With this being said, I won't be going into depth about the mechanics or various gear setups at Zalra because it would just make this video drag. Instead, I'd recommend searching a guide on YouTube as tons of people have already made very in-depth tutorials on how to kill Zalra with a variety of different budgets. However, if you still want my two cents on Zora, here's a common gear and inventory setup for beginners that has a lot of food with small amount of gear switches. In total, this whole gear setup will cost you 13.3 mil with the Trident of the Swamp and Fury, or about 7.7 .7 mil with the Trident of the Seas and no Fury. I'd also recommend using this rotation map as it's just the most intuitive when learning in my opinion. For alternatives to Zalra, I'd recommend doing some easier bosses like Barrows or the God Wars bosses so you could get used to bossing and eventually do Zalra in the future. Overall, to summarize, Zalra profits between 650k to 1.5 mil at mid levels. Doing Zalra is good for people who want to get into PVM while also training their range in magic. And finally, good alternatives to Zalra is Barrows and the God Wars dungeon bosses. Okay, everyone, for the finale, here's what we got. Okay, so now in our number one spot, we have Bone and Essence running. If you're not familiar with running, it's just when a player pays you to unknow Bones or Essence for them while they stay at the altar. It's pretty easy and people will pay you tons to do it, ranging from 800k to 3 mil an hour off Bone running, and 6 mil to 8 mil an hour for Essence running, and that's without including the potential tips people normally give at the end. I'm not going to dive into detail about how all this works as I've already made a video about bone and essence running so I'll just leave a link to the video in the description below. However if you already understand the basics of running and think you can do it then feel free to join the altar community discord or clan chat and the find runners discord or clan chat to find people to run for. I'm not sponsored or affiliated with either of these clan chats I just know they are safe places to run for bones and essence. Also, it's important to note that you don't necessarily have to be a quote-unquote mid-level to start running as there aren't any requirements for running bones, however for running essence it is required to have at least 50 runecrafting for a large pouch and recommended to have 75 runecrafting for a giant pouch. On top of this, a complete graceful set is also highly recommended for both essence and bone running to be more efficient. I know this is a somewhat underwhelming number one spot and I don't have much more to say on it as it's pretty self-explanatory, I just want you guys to be be aware of this method as there is tons of money to be made here. For alternatives, I just recommend using other clan chats or discords, so like I mentioned earlier, I have a whole video covering ways to make money on discords and clan chats, so be sure to check that out if this is something you're interested in. So to summarize, the GP per hour ranges between 800k to 3 mil an hour for bone running and between 6 mil to 8 mil an hour for essence running plus tips. The money maker is good to do on alt accounts and when rebuilding, and finally alternatives to running is using other discords and clan chats to do stuff like advertising or delivering items anyways that's gonna wrap up the video i hope you enjoyed it if you found it helpful please consider leaving a like and subscribing as this video took a while to make also, in terms of a toxic blowpipe giveaway I promised from last video, I did a random comment picker on this one website, which stonk pole pole won, so congrats my man. I really hope this helps out, and thank you for all the support so far. And finally, in terms of my next giveaway, I want to do a Bando's God Sword once we reach 200 subscribers, so please keep hitting that like button and sub button, it really helps my channel out, and I know I haven't been uploading a ton lately, but I'm really gonna get back on schedule and start uploading tons at least once a week, maybe even twice a week occasionally. So thank you guys for watching this far, and I hope you have a great day.